As we remember, our servicemen and women who died in battle were also taking this time to address another cause of death, suicide and post-traumatic stress. The VA study finds that 20 veterans take their own lives each and every day. To shed light on this dark reality is clinical director with New Start Recovery Solutions in Concord, David Burke. Thanks for talking with us. Good evening. So as we commemorate this day, would you please let us know how widespread of an issue this is for our living veterans who come home from deployment? So most of the veterans that come home from deployment, it's an estimated that 27%, I mean, usually one, one out of four will be severing with some kind of underlying issue as far as substance abuse, uh, post-traumatic stress, anxiety disorder, or some kind of an emotional numbness due to the fact of uh, suffering some kind of trauma. And so what are some of those signs you mentioned, substance abuse? So some of the signs and, and the warning signs is uh, we see when they come back after about 90 days, you know, that's kind of the onset of the of post-traumatic stress or maybe some of the anxiety issues of getting settled in and kind of debriefing from a, um, an active situation. And uh, so we'll see uh, high rates of anxiety, uh, a lot of avoidance. Uh, so that's where the emotional numbness comes in. A lot of uh, our veterans are suffering in silence. So as far as the transition back from war or any kind of deployment, um, we see some of the triggers would be uh, maybe, um, I'd say some of the urges would be uh, trying to feel comfortable in a situation where um, they have more crowds and more of an onset of uh, social anxiety. And then uh, some of the feelings and emotions and the actions that they start displaying, uh, we see them come in and they have a hard time adjusting to uh, civilian life, which is, there's a lot of depression that we're seeing. So at New Start Recovery Solutions, we treat the underlying issues as well as the substance abuse, and it's treated with dual diagnosed treatment. So we we'll use a lot of different approaches of evidence-based treatment around DVT or EMDR, and a lot of uh, emotional enhancement with some reframing tools. Um, so a lot of the uh, triggers and stuff, we'll see uh, uh, loss of sleep, uh, nightmares. A lot of veterans that are suffering silence, they um, really have a hard time um, with their spouses and family and acceptance. So uh, we, we, we see a lot of this, some of the suicide rates uh, kind of go down with early intervention and a lot of uh, um, meeting them where they're at, getting them where they need to go and running an integrated treatment plan along with our U.S. Veterans uh, Association. So now that we're New Start Recovery Solutions as a provider, we get to run the work, uh, the integrated treatment plan, that means work with, as well as if they're suffering with homelessness or if they're suffering with mental health or they're just suffering with some kind of underlying issue as far as a medical problem. So we treat the whole problem along with the family dynamics. And so you mentioned that early prevention and intervention is key. So how early on and at what sort of a sign or a first sign should a veterans themselves realize that they need to come forward and ask for help? I understand that there's a stigma around mental health in general among uh, our population. So let alone these veterans who are coming home feeling like they should remain strong as that was, of course, part of their image and their jobs. Yeah, so one of the things... I mean, I'm, I, I do a lot of intervention, and crisis intervention for veterans and, and a lot of uh, first responders and stuff. So, you know, I, I try to break the stigma of talking about quality of life and what it looks like for them coming back. So, you know, we can start right away, you know, as far as, you know, like if it's a family intervention, talk with the family along with the individual or, you know, um, one of the soldiers that are coming back. Or I even work with them when they're active. And so when they're coming back, I would say, you know, some of the underlying issues would be, um, you know, early intervention is going to be like an insurance policy with no deductible because what you're going to be doing is educating them with some reframing tools. And that's like three different ways of picking something out. They can pick out the best way. They have two other options. They're working on it themselves. So it's building their self-esteem and drive and it gives them some motivational enhancement to do something on their own instead of suffering in that silence that we talk about. Or maybe, you know, um, you know, getting confrontation because they get agitated sometimes with, uh, you know, 
coming back and it, it's a it's hard social anxiety to set into. So the offset would be early intervention, education and resources and some positive distractions with motivational enhancement. And whether that's with life skills, rebuilding, because, you know, just treating the underlying issues isn't treating the whole problem. It's just what are they going to do for the rest of their lives if it's getting back into school, if it's, you know, working with a, you know, a family dynamic counselor to bring the family back together. So um, sometimes, you know, like we work with a Caltrans contract where we help our veterans get back and we resume build and they work for us for six months. They have the option to go on to, you know, go full time. So. I think in just meeting where they're meeting them where they're at right when they get back, actually. So um, we see them as quick as six months after deployment when they get back. And so I imagine that this is an extremely sensitive topic for loved ones to come forward with their concerns and let their veteran know, hey, I think that we need uh, to get some, you know, clinical expert here to discuss whatever issues might be uh, going through your mind. But then the defense comes up. So what are some tips that you could give to people in making that really difficult approach? So what, what, what I like to recommend is, you know, it's a loving approach. It's an invitational model. So it's instead of a confrontational. So we, that internal leverage you have inside your body, you know, it's, it, you're not exercising that external and saying you got to do this. You say, you know, I, you know, I, I love you. I think, and, you know, we can get through this. This is what it looks like. And this is where our family is at with it. And we're going to get through it together. We're probably not going to figure it out today, but we seeked out some professional help along with the Veterans Association. So we have a whole team of people working for us. And all we have to do is trust the process. And that's where we come in with the Veterans Association as well. And, we, you know, what we do is we just meet them where they're at, meet the family where they're at. And then, you know, why the participant uh, uh, is in treatment with us, you know, we have a family, family dynamic workshop and I'll, we'll facilitate that. So we're not only uh, talking to the individual that's going through treatment, but we're also educating the family about what it looks like, that quality of life, that stigma of mental health and substance abuse. And so when they get out of treatment, they're talking the same language and they can support each other a little easier. And then, you know, so it's it's a, a family program, but identifying the patient you know, why he's in treatment. So the, the continue of care program, when they step out and they leave, it, that, uh, it, that portable structure that we're trying to develop when he gets out for the quality of life, that way um, everybody's on the same page. And so we have the aftercare, the alumni, and we also go into the Veterans Association and help them out and talk to them about what we can do, what we can't do, and how we fit into the system of being a provider for them. So we're very proud to be talking about this on Memorial Day today because, you know, this morning I was talking to some veterans, and, and it's an honor just to be that first frontline guy who gets the calls and walks them through, you know. I, so, um, yeah, it's we're, New Star Recovery has developed this whole program around trauma and underlying issues. What could you tell us in particular about the younger veterans who are coming back home from serving in the Middle East? What are you seeing? Is there a trend and um, what exactly they had to uh, see and witness and then are bringing those memories back with them? Well, I, what, I, what I'm seeing with the younger generation is there's more of a percentage of them like they're suffering in silence because there's so much, you know, guilt because what they, they're survive could be survivor's guilt. It could be, you know, uh, a little bit of shame about not being back in war or, you know, some of the transition back from war and deployment would be uh, the nightmares. Uh, I would say with um, the suffering silence and the apprehension and social anxieties and even say they go into a big crowd and stuff like that, the unpredictable, you know, so we like to do uh, some mindfulness uh, meditation and relapse prevention. It, it's kind of moving them through the urges, the desires, the feelings and emotions and the actions. And what we treat is the reaction to all that. And so that's where we get, we do a thing with the biopsychosocial where it covers everything on the mental health as well as the substance abuse, but also talks about what it looks like to be back in the States and how we're going to navigate through that. And so, much of life you is know. how you react to a situation and really it's in your hands and uh, but it's having the tools that help you get through that, right? Correct. So that we call that moving through some stages of change with them. 
and not every one participant is the same. So you know, those all those stages of change could be anywhere from a truck, you know, so maybe uh, he would he, he could smell something or he could feel something or he had something going around to where, um, you know, uh, say uh, Memorial Day could be a trigger, you know, because he felt like, you know, he, he's he, there's a lot of honor being a soldier. And so, you know, when you're coming back, but it's also a self identity, you know, it's your identity sometimes, too, if you've been. 20 years in the service. So, you know, how do we re uh, reinvent ourselves? And that's, you know, moving through stages of change and talking about and reflecting and, and coming up with those reframing tools so they can build that self-esteem up and fill, you know, and then there's a lot of strength in numbers. So when we work with a lot of veterans, they support each other too. It's a beautiful thing. That's a very good point. And it's not just the emotional pain that they're bringing back. According to military.com, more than half of the veterans who participated in conflicts in the Middle East actually reported that they experienced chronic pain, too. And you mentioned that could possibly lead to substance abuse to cope. Yeah, that neuroadaptation that's called tolerance. So what it does is, you know, uh, they build up over time. And, you know, it, so some of the dependents and some of the underlying issues that go along with it, you know, it hits the prefrontal lobes, which is your pleasure system. So some of the things that get compromised is your serotonins and dopamines. And so once you, they get kind of depleted with the depression, that's why we're a medical based model, you know. And so what we do is, you know, titrate them, we, we detox them, and we move them through those stages of change and we have the whole continuum of care so we go from the detox protocol which is a medical detox and uh and then we have our dual diagnose track the residential treatment so we can actually work with them and, and uh, prescribe or anything you know so we do work along with the veterans association and, and their medical team as well so some of the things that we can do along with that we we, we can serve and treat our veterans you know, a little bit better than we were 10 years ago. And it's pretty impressive what, how we do it now because, you know, they could be at the Veterans Association asking for help and two hours later we're picking them up. And, you know, we're, we're everything we're talking about right now is going to go through those stages. We're doing the biopsychosocials. We're working with the medical clinic. The psychiatrist is on staff. They transfer all this stuff to us. So they, when they feel like they're getting their feelings and emotions and, and they're, they're being heard, that's when, you know, it starts changing for them because they feel validated. That's incredible, and thank you for the work that you all do. Um, there's also the stress of when coming back, are they going to be able to find a regular job in civilian life? And if they don't in time, of course, then you have the question of financial hardship. Um, are these sorts of treatments out of pocket, or does the government end up covering those costs for, for example, services like what you offer? So, so at New Star Recovery Solutions over in Concord, and we have the one up in Chico as well. And um, so there's no, there's no charge to the veterans coming into our program. So as far as it goes, um, they just get down, to, you know, we're with the VA community care. So, uh, you know, we're proud to be serving our veterans. But at the same time, you know, um, we're gonna be working with the U.S. Veterans Association and community care to where when they go in there, they get an assessment. I'm talking to the case manager and the lead counselor and the psychiatrist. So that individual, Caltrans, a lot of the unions, because I treat first responders, and we're a behavioral health system as well. So we're pretty connected as far as, especially in the Bay Area and throughout the country, is uh, we can service our veterans, not only just mind, body, and spirit and substance abuse and mental health, but we also work with their life skills. So we get to run that along with like some of the unions and stuff. and apprenticeship programs you know we have over 100 people uh, employed with us and i can tell you over 25 percent of them are veterans as well so we're employing veterans uh, all other agencies we work with are so um you know it, it seems to be something that um i see after like some of the fires we had in northern california fema came in so we had a lot of job training there so a lot of them got endorsed and went on to work as a firefighter fire cleanup or, you know, with the Caltrans. Well, thank you so much to David Burke. He's the clinical director with New Start Recovery Solutions in Concord for talking to us and in all that really crucial work that you do in helping giving our veterans a fighting chance. You're watching Cronon, the Bay Area streaming news 24 seven.